Beyond, and hello everyone. This is IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. I'm your host, Jonathan Dornbush, for podcast episode 678. We're recording on December 1st. That means it's time for the holiday season, and what better day <laughs> to debut this amazing Fall Guys Christmas jumper than on the 1st of December. Anyway, uh, more importantly, more importantly, I'm joined by a wonderful cast of people who put up with my nonsense uh, this week, including Brian Altano. I'm wearing a gray sweatshirt, which is sort of like you know, matches the holiday of 2020 in general. <laughs> That's very fair. Uh, also joined this week by Max Scoville. I'm wearing an uncanny X-Men shirt because I wish, wish you an uncanny Xmas, I guess. <laughs> uh, and we're also joined this week by Asa Green River. Thank you so much for being here, Asa. Thank you for having me and giving me time to switch my shirt to something a little more festive. Of course. Gl- glad you were able to do that last minute. I appreciate yeah, you yeah. Uh, joining into the spirit. Uh, for those who may not... Uh, know you uh obviously uh you were recently on uh kind of funny uh for those who may have seen mm-hmm. your face pop up recently and of course you do a lot of work on your own so i thought i'd give you a second just to introduce yourself for those who may not know you uh and talk a little bit about what you do in the gaming world yeah yeah so uh my name is asa green river from columbus ohio uh with a, a small potatoes group called borderline entertainment here and uh we do pretty much everything underneath the gaming sun so we have live streams youtube content written content and uh, more recently, if I can, if I can plug something, um, please. We had a, a, a panel discussion yesterday that I hosted for Native American Heritage Month on the last day, and uh, it was myself and five other Native and Indigenous people from throughout the gaming industry, uh, from streamers to voice actors to game devs to writers, and uh, it was just a really good time and a really powerful conversation. And thanks again to Twitch for putting us on the front page and, and elevating those voices. So. Yeah, that's a in a nutshell the best I got. <laughs> it uh, it, it was a phenomenal chat. I was watching some of it this morning, uh, and we'll definitely we'll definitely make sure to include a link uh, in the description for this so people can go check it out for themselves. But yeah, super yeah. super excited to have you on the show. I know we've crossed over uh, into December, uh, so we weren't properly able to have you on during the Fine. month, but um, we're still very happy to have you here for this week. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely uh, jump in a little bit later for any other plugs you can think of toward the end of the show as well. But I did want to also just start off the bat of, uh, of course, asking as we have uh, most of our guests, were you able to get your hands on a PS5 and what have you been playing if so? Yeah, so um, I have fallen victim to the scalpers at large mm. and have not been able. We've My wife and I have jumped into every single supply drop that has ever happened on every device <laughs> that we possibly own. Um, but, but. Uh, last week, Walmart had a drop while I was streaming. My wife actually picked one up, so it'll be here tomorrow. So I'm nice. super stoked oh, for awesome. that. Congratulations. That's yeah. so awesome. When you said you fell victim to the scalpers, I was like, oh, no, this dude bought a $2,000 PS5. <laughs> my, the first thing my brain went to is like, uh-oh, this is going to be, oh, we're no. going to have to have a, this is our first time hanging out. We're going to have to have a talk. I'm going to be like, <laughs> oh, man, it's bad. Listen, it's- if it would have come to 2021 and I hadn't gotten one yet, I would have had that talk with you because I would have been buying a three thousand dollar PS5. <laughs> you know what's funny? We talked actually uh, on the show last week. We talked about um, the sort of like the sneaker community and how uh, yeah people like creating bots to snatch up stuff on the sneakers app um, led to <laughs> the sort of situation we're dealing with with the PS5. And I got a notification from StockX, which is like the leading website yep. for reselling. Uh, Jordans and sneakers and stuff like that. And they were like, we have the PS5 and the Series X. And I was like, this whole oh, circle. You gotta be Go me. to hell. Like, yeah, right. Uh, but I clicked on it and they, they're like 900 bucks there, which I gotta say, damn. better deal than the $2,000. Right? Version, yeah. Or don't pay it. Please don't yeah, pay it. Also, a better deal than all of those terrible eBay listings that are like PS5 photo. Oh, it's yeah. It's just actually yeah. a photo, which is just mm-hmm. the worst. Yeah. Did you see somebody bought a box? They just bought the, the empty PS5 box and it just said in the listing, like PlayStation 5, just the box, no what? console. And so it was like it was undersold. And I think someone paid like 150 bucks or something for it. And I think they just panicked. Yeah. They were like, oh, I'm going to bid. Got a bid. Yeah, we were. These? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're too kind. <laughs> oh, okay. No. <laughs> 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 no, that's my, the official uh, theme song of 2020 by the way it's not yeah. no, you, you, how, you, okay you. Uh, a, a friend of mine uh cory cudney he bought the the all digital version and then got the regular disc based version so what oh yes he opened the box it, the box said all digital opened it up and it is the disc uh ps5 so 
what's happening to all the all digital consoles? Are they even real? I don't think they're, <laughs> they're I think real. it's amazing. I, so I, I own one. They're real. Yes. Oh, okay. Like 10 okay. Of them. <laughs> I walked, I went to walk the dog this morning and like, there's frequently just, there's just like random trash on the street because uh, it, I don't know. And, and th- there was a pile of trash and on top of it was like a totally torn to shreds digital PS5 box. And I, it was just the weirdest <laughs> thing to see like lying there. Mm-hmm. I don't, is- and I'm like, somebody, I, some, somebody got it. Maybe I guess. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> The weirdest, yeah, the weirdest video game trash I've ever seen on the street was I was walking home from the movies one day back when we could do that. And there was just a full rock band. I think it was rock band three band kit. And this was in SF. So it was years after rock band three, but it was just like the box of a fully intact rock band three, like full band kit that was just sitting there. I have no idea if it was in it because I obviously didn't want to see what was inside the box if it wasn't but uh yeah that was just someone had that for years i uh i was i was driving down like a fairly busy road in new jersey when i was like 20 something and there was just like a fully like put together working robotron 2084 arcade cabinet and i was like hell yes and over, <laughs> open up the trunk and my friend was in my car i'm like get like help me lift this thing <laughs> That's great. Brought That's my there's, house. there's pictures of me in college just completely losing my mind, my mind because someone left an entire Operation Wolf cabin on the side of the road. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just driving my girlfriend. We just pulled over. and I was like, oh, my God. She's like, do you want to put that in my car? And I was like, I like poked around. There's just like bird's nests and crap inside. I was like, maybe this we shouldn't we shouldn't take this. <laughs> what streets are you guys on? Because I, you know, I see a, an open Nerf gun and I'm like, oh, score. I don't have any darts, but sick. I'm not saying arcade cabinets. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think that that was like a big. I don't. It still is. I mean, people would just arcade cabinets are like things that people go like, "What do I need this thing for?" It's the size yeah. of a car standing up, <laughs> and it does one specific thing incredibly loudly. Like they're really cool, and they're kind of like tattoos. When you have a bunch of them, they they look better, right? Um, but I don't think that there's like most people just they go like, oh, "This was a weird midlife crisis, and I don't need it anymore." And then people like me, who are you know crawling into the midlife crisis go oh mm-hmm. cool i'm yeah. gonna get one of those yeah. but also like yeah. if you want to throw one out if it's not working it's you got to pay for like an oversized thing that's full of e-waste so you yeah. wind up paying money to take care of it so i guess they people just dump them like i don't know like bodies they just put them <laughs> <laughs> maybe it just means people in columbus are more responsible that's no they're not. Yeah. <laughs> that's the last thing that they are <laughs> it means that they're not cool that's what it means fair enough <laughs> Um, Well, speaking of not cool things, I thought we could talk about a little bit of internal market research that apparently happened at PlayStation. That was a hell of a segue Uh, to talk about an interesting report that popped up pretty recently um, about why the activity cards are such a big part of the PlayStation 5. Uh, So this was a report from Vice that came out that they were able to get their hands on internal Sony documents, which they haven't posted because of watermarks that would show who their sources are uh but anyway the the documents talked about how sony firmly believes that single player is thriving but one of the issues they see with people is that they don't play unless they have a large amount of time so more than two hours of free time and so the, a lot of the responses they were getting were like people don't want to play because they don't know how long a task is going to take them um how much they have to do to go through something or if they're going to have to like be using a long walkthrough video or guide at the same time. And so these activity cards were made to be able to mitigate those worries, Um, Mm -hmm. which I think is really interesting that such a, it is such a integrally like dedicated part of the PS5. Like the more I use my PS5, the more they seem to be very much like both prominent and useful to me. But I did, I did want to start off with obviously Asa, you haven't uh, gotten a PS5 yet, but I I do want to hear your thoughts on uh, the functionality of them but brian and max using a ps5 have you found yourself first off using the activity cards much no yeah no, no I, 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 I should like that's that's my own fault right like they like read i was actually reading up about them this morning i was like when i was looking at the story and um it's like absolutely something that i should be doing more but also um i do think there's like a weird uh other side to it where it almost makes like it, it sort of strips away the kind of fundamental ex, ex, exploratory parts of playing a video game and finds it down just to a task, which is uh, a good thing if like you're a trophy hunter or you have a specific thing you want to do. But a lot of a lot of games, uh, especially the two flagship games for me, Demon Souls and Spider Man, aren't really games that I really like want to 
like beeline right to the specific thing I need to do. They're about like sort of embedding myself in that world and spending time in it. And then something like, you know, Astrobot, um, which I platinum, I didn't use the activity cards really much at all. And that was mostly because I, 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 I'm, I guess I'm kind of old school. I was just like pulling up the controls and I'm like, well, this is what I need to do. This is where I need to get a gold crown. This is what I need to do to hundred percent it. Um, and so I, I, like, I, I totally understand why they're there, but I do sort of fear that they, they just, they turn, they, they basically checklist what should be an experience, you know? Um, yeah, I like, I'm for them. I'm not against them. I just personally haven't really been using them. Um, because I, that's not really how I play games. I like to sit down for a few hours and sort of just like, you know, get into it. The the biggest use for them uh, that I've found is there was a tweet that went viral that actually pretty much showed this. And it's for like with Spider-Man, essentially, if you go to the activity cards from your like dashboard on that specific game, you can hit the activity card and it will just jump you to that point in the world. So you're skipping all of the loading, you're skipping all of the like uh, opening menus and everything. If it's not the game you have loaded up already. And I think uses like that are really fun and inventive. But yeah, I agree with you. Like most of the fun of Spider-Man is being able to swing around as Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And if you take that out, it's not as much of a Spider-Man game. anymore. That was, <clears throat> I was playing uh, Miles Morales on the PS five that I was borrowing from Lucy, which I've since passed on to another IGN employee. And there's that weird thing where you can play games on other people's accounts, but only on that console, you know, like it's, there's, you know, locative mm -hmm. game sharing, whatever. Yeah. But, um, I still don't have, I don't have my own copy of miles. So I was like, I beat it and I got all the way through it. And I was like, really, I was like, I could platinum this if I didn't have to mail this thing away. And it was really tempting for a second to be like, again, to hop that exact objective, because like once you've totally explored an open world and you're just kind of like cleaning up, I think it totally makes sense in that, in, you know, in that sense. But like, what are you going to do with that for like demon souls? Like that game is entirely about anything that hasn't, you haven't explored yet or that hasn't killed you is like completely obscured. It's all about like, you're, you're all about uncovering, you know, mysteries. It's not about checking, you know, checking boxes in that case. Uh, and I think half the trophies are hidden anyway, Yeah. but mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I find myself like, you know, to Brian's point, like with games that are all about big, huge exploration, it's you, you want to explore for yourself. You know, it's, it's really, it, I think I've, I've been, I've, I've been just aggressively ignoring the activities cards and I'm, I, Part of me kind of wishes I could just turn them off entirely, but I also completely understand that that logic of like, oh, people don't know if they're going to take if they're going to have time to do this thing, you know, like they don't know if it's and like I've I've straight up like Googled, um, like, I'll you know, I'll start a new chapter in Yakuza and I'll be like, all right, how many chapters are left? And I'll like sort of cover my eyes to be like, I don't want to spoil anything, but also I kind of want to wrap this up. Like, I kind of want to, you know, mm -hmm. beat the game and move on to the next one or do something else. But um I mean, anecdotally, I've been I've been playing a ton of Call of Duty multiplayer, which is like totally out of character for me. And I think <laughs> I figured out what really like really works is that it's like 10 minute chunks, you know, like it's like, mm -hmm. I'll be like, I'll play a match and it's like a 15 minute thing. And it, there's no, you know, it, it doesn't do that, like string you along. I mean, it does with with sort of like hooking you and making you want to play more. But in the case of open world stuff, I'll be like, all right, I'm going to beeline some some story missions and try to move things along and upgrade some stuff. And then I'll be like, you know there's a mysterious event happening over that hill. And I'll be like, well, I'm going to go check that out. Or like, Ooh, iron ore. I better go shoot rocks with arrows and collect <laughs> rocks for more rock. I don't know what the ore does. <laughs> I still have it. Yeah. In Valhalla, I have no idea what the ore does yet, but I, that's how I've been playing Valhalla is I basically, I'm like, I'm going to go to that story mission, but whatever distracts me, like I played ghost of Tsushima this way, whatever distracts me, I'm going to let naturally distract me. Cause part of the fun is just coming upon something you don't know is going to be there. Um, and and the cards sort of take that out of it. But Asa, as someone who hasn't really gotten to use these at all, I'm curious, are you excited for them? Are you someone who is like a completionist who may want to mm -hmm. have all this data avail uh, available to you? Like, how, how does your play style do you think will match to what activity cards offer? You know, I feel like for the most part, I'm pretty similar to everybody else that I'm I wish that I could just turn them off because it's not something that I would naturally gravitate towards. That said, I also like I understand that they exist. And in some instances, I'm really happy because like especially this time of year where there's like a million games coming out that we all want to play. And I've also got like a family and like I've got a, a kid and a wife and dogs like and I have to be a good son and friend to people like your time is kind of divided. So like there are times where, yes, I want to explore and I just want to be in a game 
and, and, and escape for a bit. But if I want to progress the story and I don't have the time that I wish that I had, and I just want to bust something out in like 20 minutes, I, I might use them probably. It all depends. But yeah, all in all, it's not really something that I just instinctively I'm like, oh, great feature. Sony, this is exactly what I want. So I feel like they would have been so much more welcome on a console with much worse load times. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah. fact that they, they showed up at the exact same time as like the fastest video game console ever made. And you're like, cool. Oh, I can get I can I, like I you hit the button and you're playing Miles Morales in like eight seconds normally. Um, and now they're like, well, you can you can cut that part out. I'm like, well, that's OK. I mean, that's that's great, but that's not necessary for me. Um, but yeah, I like I don't know. I, I think that I think that they'll they'll get more usage in the future when we start to figure out like w- what exactly we want to hone in on specifically. Like, I mean, if you can jump to a multiplayer match in a game directly from an activity card, then that's smart, right? Then the, you're not, you're yeah. bypassing and like you're, you're cutting right past all the parts that you don't care about. Um, if you want to like, if you want to jump right to a boss fight to show a friend, right? Like something like that is, is totally awesome. Like this, there's, there's if definitely, you could, if you yeah. could have like in-game bookmarks, that would be cool. Yeah. So like like yeah. Photoshop yeah. has a thing yeah. where you could basically like, you can automate a series of actions where you basically hit record, you go through the whole thing. And if there was like a way of doing that and making a custom activity card where it's like, I mean, I would, I would straight up make like custom activity cards for like the starting, uh, you know, arch stones and dark souls and be like, I know where I want to go and what I want to do. I'm going to head right here, but instead it's like, all right, load it up wherever I was, then fast travel, you know, go, you know, move mm-hmm. back and forth. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, it, <laughs> To the point of like wanting to explore and get lost, like I, that's a completely different psychology from wanting to go around and like collect stuff and check boxes. And I'm sure, you know, everyone plays games a little bit differently, but that to me feels so much like the person who goes on vacation with a really strict itinerary and like exactly the amount of time allotted for each thing. But like some people just want to wander around a strange new place and like check stuff out mm-hmm. for themselves. But it's like that's, if you want to, you know, you want to get on top of one of those double decker buses and just drive around and see everything in one day, then there you go. Yeah. But it's also I don't I don't know if they're entire entirely like sort of coherent on the on the e- e- user side. Uh, I, I I do feel like there's a little bit of sort of inherent confusion when you pause a game or you hit the home button. Like I still feel like when I hit the home button on PS5, I'm not exactly sure exactly what's going to happen or where it's going to go like it's and i'm still navigating a new console um but there are things that used to be up top that are now down on bottom and hitting home brings you these like six cards in a row and for a second there you might be like are those trophies is that trophy completion statistics is it chapters like this if this is not a like chapter based game like miles morales is an open world game that also has leveling and has specific story missions that you can replay and so like it, it, there is no direct language from game to game, like uh, you know, open world games don't necessarily have chapters, you know, Demon Souls doesn't necessarily have chapters. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, it's hard to sort of parse what exactly of a percentage of what arbitrary thing that they've decided that you're even 62% done with because <laughs> you hit the home button and you're kind of like, well, that's, it's a picture and a bar that's almost full and a number. What are you trying to tell me? Oh, there's seven of them. Um, Okay, I was I was trying to find settings, you know. Like. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I I do think there's a lot of more user preferences that could be put into them, and hopefully that's something that comes with time. Like the the bookmark suggestion, I think is such a great one, or like prioritizing the types of cards so that like I always want to see trophy cards pop up, or I always mm-hmm. want to see side mission cards or things like that. Because mm-hmm. on the uh, I, I'm playing Sackboy, and that's probably where I've used them the most because it will pull up the levels and tell me you're missing these three things. It'll take an estimated 10 minutes and not that that'll like make or break what I'm going to do, but it is a lot of useful information that offers like a snapshot in a platformer game. That's all about collecting. And I think that works really well in that context, but I will. that context just doesn't work for demon mm-hmm. souls. No, no, I could no, definitely no. see using that for, for Sackboy. And like, yeah. Brian, you, you mentioned something like, like jumping to a boss. I would wonder then if I were to use that to jump to the boss fight, to try and get that trophy, is it going to give me all of the XP and the items that I would need along the way? Or is it just going to jump me in the status that I'm in, leaving right. me really unprepared? Yeah, I mean, that's what we were wondering about, like, be- before it launched, like how Demon Souls would handle, how, or Souls-like games would handle stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. it's like, everybody's going in with a different character class. And like, I maybe brought in right. like 17 gnarled wheat, 
woods or whatever and then max has like <laughs> six, you know lizard's eyes and it's like everybody has a different way they play this like you watch youtube videos of people playing bloodborne and you're like what i didn't even know you could do that you know? i mean like, with, with demon souls they should just straight up have like that should default to being guides yeah like or maybe or mm-hmm. maybe a fast travel point thing but there's not it's not even really fast travel in that game it's like a totally i, I don't know it's it's like a it's like a Mega Man, you know, boss title screen or whatever. Like you're kind of choosing your, you know, choosing your where you want to get your ass kicked. Yeah, I, I will say that a PS5 UI a notification thing that I turned off immediately because it's like infuriating is uh, there's basically this subsystem that tracks these sort of like micro challenges that happen in games that you might not have even noticed. So, for example, there's like a time trial uh, mm. section of Astro's Playroom. And I did a couple of the levels. I was like, that was fun. And it immediately sort of like cross referenced my score with other people's score. So I was constantly getting notifications being like, this guy just beat your score. What are you going to do about it? And I was like, nothing. I don't care. Let him have this. I don't want this. Like I did something in Miles uh, and it, it was called like a spider run or something. I don't even know what I did. But uh, apparently it's like a micro challenge and they they posted it and cross referenced it with my entire buddy list on PS5 and or were just constantly sending me notifications while I was playing Miles the other day being like, hey, this guy just like he's faster than you at this game. Mm. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, believe me. Yeah. Alone. So that's that's like the wrong way to implement something that I kind of love, which is yeah. um, Sleeping Dogs did this really well where it had like it basically had like passive leaderboards where you would be like driving along mm. and it would be like it would show your friend their name would pop up and it's like clean drive. And it's like, you just beat them or like, Oh, their record is this. Can you beat that? You'd be like on your way from point A to point B. And you're like, and instead of being like, I'm going to go sidetrack and go over here. You're just like, I'm going to focus on what I'm doing at this exact moment and be like, how many parking meters can I hit? And then, you know, there was like this weird, like, I don't know. It was, it was a really interesting way of just gamifying the, the things that happen in between stuff. And like, I mean, Spider-Man has the same thing where you're doing stunts while you're swinging around. Uh, but I, again, it doesn't, I haven't gotten the notification side of that. Like, I don't know if that's, I don't know. Mm. That's I've, I've gotten it most with Astros and Sackboy so far, but yeah, it is. It's annoying to be in the, I, I wish that stuff was uh default off at first and you could adjust the settings from there. Like it is something we can just go in now and change, but yeah, I do wish it wasn't there from the jump because I'm, I'm in the middle of a demon souls boss. And then it's like, Ooh, uh, Andrew beat your score at this Astros playroom speed run. Can you beat him? And it's like, no, I'm dying right now. in demon souls. <laughs> I don't need that. Um, uh, yeah, I think there's, I think what we're seeing is like a, a reasonable first attempt and an idea of what the activity cards could be in like perpetuity and in the future of the PS5. But it does feel like the first draft of something that will get us to like a, a better user experience. But I do wonder how it will change open world games and the use of that and the structure of all of that. If if Sony does find that people are suddenly all defaulting to using activity cards, I don't think that'll happen. But it, it is interesting to know that this was such a clear data point for them based on how people played the PS4 um, and how that could affect the PS5. It is, of course, really good to see that for them, as reinforced by their first party stable, single player games are doing well for all of the like games as a service and multiplayer focused things like I just got out of the Fortnite Marvel event an hour ago before we recorded like those things are some of the biggest things in the world right now but obviously for them single player is paramount so much so that they built this into the brunt of what you do on your PS5 um so I think that's really good to see but yeah I, I do think it's something that we'll we'll have to see what happens as the system evolves for sure um one thing I, I did want to touch on though that we can speak to at least at launch, an interesting thing is happening, and I know that the second we bring this up, we're going to get some fanboyism and console war stuff, so I do want to approach this. I think there there is a reasonably pretty civil way to approach this, um, but uh, especially done by work at Digital Foundry and our own uh, Destin Legary is currently working on a lot of these comparisons as well. Uh, players have been noticing that multi-platform games have been working better on the PS5 versus the Xbox Series X. Uh, these are all in various ways where um, I think Dirt 5 is one of the games that has been playing better on PS5. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was playing better and more smoothly on PS5 uh, with the Xbox Series X having more screen tearing and regular frame rate dips. This was before they added a performance versus uh, fidelity mode that I think got added like a week after these stories first happened. But we're seeing this pop up and this was also happening even with Black Ops Cold War, one of the biggest games of the fall. 
and uh destin talking to him about it he was like yeah it runs like it it has issues on both but it's definitely running much worse for him on xbox um Mm. and it is this interesting thing i think that we've gotten to where uh digital foundries uh richard ledbetter said the dips look really strange it kind of suggests some kind of api limitation on the xbox side where the gpu is being held back by something and in more layman's terms xbox just came out flatly and told the verge um we're aware of these issues and we're actively working with partners to identify uh, and resolve these issues. So it seems to be things that they are even surprised that are happening. Um, but it, it's this interesting point that we've come to where after I think a year of teraflop versus teraflop, what can be better? It didn't, it didn't really matter for launch. Like next gen games are still looking and running more smoothly than current gen games, but the current gen version of Miles still looks great, and you can still play a pretty version of Assassins on current gen. Um, it, it, it for me, it sort of just crystallized this idea that like these thing, these technical issues are always going to pop up, and there will always be issues. And I don't think this means Sony has won the console war or that Xbox mm-hmm. lied. Like it doesn't mean any of that to me. But I, I do think it is interesting how a few technical hurdles can be spun into one console's terrible all of a sudden when it's not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if, if you guys were paying much attention to the story, Ace. I don't know if you've seen many yeah. of these reports, um, but I was curious to hear your thoughts of just like, it, we spent so long, like months and months and months talking about theoretical power of these consoles. Xbox right. is supposed to be the most powerful console on paper. Uh, and at least at launch, that's not always the case i i think it speaks to this generation not being like the biggest leap from the last generation mm-hmm. compared to like you know the hd jump but i was curious of your thoughts on like what you think this means as we get into the future of the console cycle yeah yeah no i think it's really interesting because i don't remember the exact time frame but uh somewhere somebody had talked about that microsoft had given these developers dev kits of the xbox series x and series s pretty early on and that the that sony gave out ps5 dev kits like with a much shorter time span before the console launch. So you would think that they would have plenty of time to iron out all the kinks before any of this would ever be a reality. Um, but what it really starts to get me thinking is um, when when I was talking about um, on KFGD, we were, we were talking about how Psyonix was having the issue with uh, porting over to PS5 with, with Rocket League that they had to build from the ground up. So it's going to be a while before you're going to see a next gen optimized version of rocket league whereas with the xbox series x it was a quick easy patch and something that they could put in really quickly and that they could jump up so i'm wondering if like is this like a double-edged sword to where you know with with sony really putting on these strict rules yeah it sucks and i don't make games so i have no idea like what goes into that but um maybe it's for the better that they put on these strict rules because they know that they're going to get the best fidelity possible whereas like if you just throw in a quick patch like as we've seen with pretty much gaming since the Xbox 360 PS3, like patches are coming out nonstop. So maybe that wasn't the right path. And that's that's initially what I was thinking was going on. To touch on what Asa said there, I'm actually, you know, not to not to be too much of an Xbox fanboy here, but I'm kind of surprised that it's not the other way around because, yeah. you know, you look at Sony's kind of track record for doing stuff in a very proprietary fashion and being like, this is how we're doing it. You should do it this way. And Xbox is typically kind of being like, it's basically a PC. And at this point, they're all they're both basically PCs. But just given how like fundamentally similar from the outside, the Series X and the regular Xbox One X S, whatever, it's it's like the same UI. Like you open it up, it looks it looks the same. And it's kind of how it performs is really the big difference. But and then you look at the, the PS5 and it's like it it is like clearly a different animal. Like it's doing a whole bunch of new stuff. And you know, I, I immediately was like, oh, the hard drive is 800 and what it's like 825 gigs, or something, yeah. which is just like a so, weird number. And I'm like that it may, the games have to probably go in there sideways like they must. I mean, they've <laughs> got to fit the bytes in diagonally. Like, I don't know. Like they probably use. I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But like um, and again, like we don't again, we don't make games, so we don't fully understand how this stuff works. But it it it's really surprising. Um, but I mean, yeah, the, the digital foundry thing about like possibly there being something you know, something internally holding stuff back. Um, the other thing is like, they what like out the gate, they were like over a thousand games are backwards compatible or like yeah. they just, they came out, which yeah. is just, that's a lot, you know, that's, mm-hmm. and to be like, yeah, we, we've made sure that you can get, uh, you know, jet force Gemini running smoothly or like, you know, whatever, like old ass, <laughs> like Xbox original Xbox one games are like, yeah, that works just fine. And it's like, well, 
there's a lot of other stuff to worry about too. Yeah, yeah there's. Yeah. A, sorry, go ahead, Brian. Uh, no, go for it. I was just going to say there's definitely a give and take to it, and I d- I definitely think there is for anyone who is trying to paint this as like a PS5 wins, Xbox loses. I think totally hold your horses. Each of them is doing different things right now, and these are also you know sporadic cases that I think are worth addressing. But it's it's it more becomes a problem if this keeps happening for the next three years if mm-hmm. every third party game suddenly doesn't work well on xbox clearly there's an issue there but i don't think that's going to be the case but anyway brian go ahead yeah no i think i think that's exactly it i mean we're you know four weeks into a new generation not even and you know three three games have been tested across both sides and they're almost all of them are playing better on on ps5 but there's still i mean let's let's see what happens with uh you know immortals and cyberpunk and all the other games that are still coming. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it's interesting because my plan this generation was to make my Series X my third party machine and then reading some of this stuff and then honestly getting my hands on the dual sense and uh and and sort of just playing games with that more regularly. I, I was like, maybe maybe this is the way I'll go. But I, I think like like every other time it's going to be a very case by case thing. Like you know, and you're gonna have to wait for people like Destin and people like Digital Foundry who do phenomenal work. Um, and I feel bad for them honestly because they're I, I like they they there's they do these incredible technical breakdowns that are basically co-opted by twelve year olds to be used as like like bullets in the console war. And I think it's just like like ultimately it's a lot more complicated than that. And I will say that like like whereas some games are running better on ps5 than they are on series x my series x is running better than my ps5 is my ps5 has had like weird crashes and a lot of people's has and that's been kind of an issue i know the series x has too but like there are just weird like things that keep popping up on ps5 it definitely feels like it's still kind of figuring out what it wants to do whereas xbox is like it's me xbox again i make the same sound when i start up (laughs) Same UI, but the same games. And PS5 is like, oh, we have cards and the controller talks. Oh, God, how do we do this all? God, it's falling apart. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is still very early. We'll see where all this goes. Um, right now, I'm like a little annoyed that I started uh, Valhalla on Series X if it's better on PS5 because I would have just gotten it there, you know? And so I think for, for people who own both consoles, um, which is incredibly difficult to do right now since they're both impossible to get, uh, then you're going to want to do sort of a, you know, case by case, wait and see scenario to see which one you want to get. But I, I think Max is right. Like I, I expected it to go the other way. Like Sony's the company Same. where you, if you had, you had too many swords going through a doorway in Skyrim, you had to put them down. <laughs> <laughs> because the game was like, Oh, what are you doing with all those swords? Like, like this is, there's been a lot, like PS3 was notoriously impossible to develop for. Like people had, Tons of problems up until the, the day that system died. They were like, this is a pain in the ass. The PS4 was obviously better. And it seems like for all intents and purposes, PS5 is, is pretty much a breeze to develop for. But yeah, wait and see. I, I think Cyberpunk's gonna be the big tell. Like yeah. that, I feel yeah. I feel so bad for CD Project Red for having to figure out how to make that game work across every type of PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, Xbox one x the the launch version of the xbox like neo geo uh, pocket <laughs> the wonder swan color uh, what, stadia like, it is on stadia yeah it's, can we just get one more delay please yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> um well i think like the ps5 and xbox series x like versions aren't even going to be there for launch day like i think we're going right. to be playing the 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 smaller ver- the smaller the the last generation versions up resed or, or you know working backward compatible so yeah it's uh it is one of those things that i i totally i wanted to bring the story up for very much for that fact of like wait and see take them on a case-by-case basis like i i do not think this says anything about where the generation is going to go I, it is an interesting like footnote on the edge uh, of this launch but as brian was saying like we're for we're barely a month out from launch uh, just wait until Christmas when probably all of the networks get hacked and all there's probably a whole <laughs> host of new problems that happen because that always does. Um, anyway, briefly also want to mention on the news front, uh, I think this published just after last week's episode. If not, Max, feel free to yell at me. But uh, the free PlayStation Plus games for December that are currently available, I got the notifications for them yesterday because I follow Wario64 on Twitter and that was the easiest way to find out. Uh, our Worms Rumble, Just Cause 4 and Rocket Arena. 
Uh, interestingly, two uh, multiplayer focused games and then Just Cause 4 as well. Uh, Worms Rumble is the only PS4 and PS5 game. Uh, I don't personally have much to say about any of these games. I haven't played Rocket Arena or Just Cause 4. Worms Rumble is brand new, so that's a new game. I do like that they've added another game for the PS5. Like we talked a lot on the show about like when they went down to two games uh, from six. Mm-hmm. That was a little bit of a bummer, so it's nice to see them adding to it. But I, I'm very curious to see what PS Plus's place becomes on PS5, especially because this didn't coincide with a new addition to the PlayStation Plus collection. Well, PS5. so far, I think it's mostly been some of the most sort of taxing graphical powerhouses in the history of our medium. We've got bug <laughs> snacks and uh, worms, <laughs> 3D rumble, whatever you say. <laughs> and so this is obviously this is the power of the PS5. You know, this is the kind of thing. This is I, I remember playing worms back in the day and being like this is i need a playstation 5 this is this game's running like crap these worms are i don't know moving. if you've ever tried to make a worm using computers it's hard it's really <laughs> like hard. a worm that rumbles get out of here man <laughs> in a battle royale nonetheless Ugh, games these days but yeah it's a, uh, I yeah it is a curious thing i do wish there was like one launch ps5 game like even if it was the up version of no man's sky or devil may cry 5 like something that is like you're saying a visual powerhouse to be like yep that's what the PS5 can do. Like I was watching gameplay for Worms Rumble and I'm like, I don't need my PS5 for this. Like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm curious yeah. about Just Cause 4 because that had like, I think it was it was either three or four, but it had pretty rough load times. And that was also a game where you would like, you know, accidentally slingshot yourself into an exploding windmill. And then you'd, yeah. you're like, oops, <laughs> that was four. That was four. It was <laughs> riddled with bugs. I played it yeah. on the PC, so it's a little bit different, but yeah. No, I, we, I remember playing the console version of four and just being like, oh man, what happened here? Like this was, <laughs> that was, it was, um, it, it, it like teetered into like just being comical. Like it was actually, it was actually funny how poorly it ran at launch. Uh, yeah. and like a lot of stuff like Max was just describing, like just, just the dude falling through the geometry and stuff like that. We had to do like, you had to do collisions or like, um you know, challenges or like, you know, collision course stuff to, to unlock certain things or to like get skill points or whatever. So you could throw more slingshots in different directions or whatever you're supposed to do. And I remember just trying to do like a really basic early game one and then screwing it up a few times and the load times, you know, took longer than it, it would take me to screw it up. Like it was the whole thing would be like, Oh, you're just trying to go through this like tunnel here or whatever, like on a hang glide. I can't remember what it was, but I just remember just being like, (laughs) I'm not doing this. Like I'm, I'm just, I'll come back later maybe. But if that, I mean, if they fix the load times and that's a wonky ass game where you can make a lot of explosions happen, I'm into it. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time where I was parachuting down and uh, clipped through the ground. So I kept going. And so I shot, I don't, I don't know. I shot up my grappling hook and was hanging from the ground underneath it. And I'm like, what, how is this a thing? What? <laughs> that's amazing. How is that possible? I love stuff like that. By yeah. the way, have we, have we talked about that, that Spider-Man Miles Morales glitch? Where you can I don't know if we have. <laughs> Wait, I don't know if we have. a street yeah. lamp. Oh my god! Somebody became one of those like outdoor restaurant heaters the other day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it looked like pop hunt. It's like I really want to. I want to <laughs> replicate it. It's. It has to do with like the way Miles uh, experiences a collision with certain objects in the game. He just becomes them, which sounds like a different superhero. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Somebody. He was just like a space heater and. uh Lord and Miller tweeted um, about how like they, they'll be doing like a huge disservice in the community if they don't find a way to put that in Spider-Verse 2. Um, so like there might be a scene in Spider-Verse where doing this just like a parking meter or a heater swing. <laughs> it's that so the, be, the, gar- um, the garbage can like climbing up the wall. I was laughing so hard. It was just oh, like so slapping. Good. There's a I'll there's a like giant p- there's a giant like puddle that does the car takedown. Yes. That's great too. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah it's just, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> it's him as a puddle doing the car takedown, like uh, quick time animation. But very occasionally, you'll see like the shadow of Miles pop out. So it's like his his <laughs> model is still there, but it just disappears. That the almost puddle. feels like a like a passive aggressive thing to everyone who got mad at the puddles in the trailer. Yeah, the no, the, pu- like, the, well, yeah, the, the puddle back. can jack cars now. What's what up? <laughs> 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 the puddles black back and bloodthirsty for revenge. <laughs> that, I wish that that was a. I wish there was a cheat menu in that game. Like you could just go in like a, and just be like, what household object do you want to be in the game? Dude, like I wish I wish there was a cheat menu in any game in 2020. That just yeah that, that, yeah. that sucks that that died. That used to be so fun to just be like, hey, guess what? Everybody has stupid huge hands now and they fart. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, everyone's like, games are art now. You can't do that. And you're like, yes, I agree. Let me make the big Gosh. handed big headed fart man. <laughs> 
Um, I mean, that's the thing with like The Last of Us, where there's the glitch where Ellie's arm will just like yes. stay in one position. I wish yeah. you could just make that glitch a full time thing. That would be so funny to go into a, like a very serious stealth mission, but she just has like one arm that, shot up into yeah. the air, just like waiting. To our, our head of news, Joe Scrabbles, uh, and his like entire playthrough, there's like six hours where uh, Ellie's arm was just like this, just like <laughs> stuck in front of her face. Because I think he went to pull back an arrow and it just got like, it's just got it stuck. It gets in, stuck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I had a really weird one happen um, in Assassin's Creed. I was on like this mission and I was supposed to like follow this lady to a hut. And I just look over and there's <laughs> there's this horse standing there. And I don't know if it was I don't know if it was completely hairless or if it accidentally <laughs> had the texture of a pig's skin. But it was basically <laughs> this just completely smooth, a little bit veiny oh. pink horse. And it was just the it didn't have a mane. It didn't. It had like just it, it was just like a nude horse. And. <laughs> I was like, is this it's got to be a bug. And I like took a screenshot. I didn't want to tweet out because I feel like people always do that where they're like, gotcha, Ubisoft. It's like the man rendered with no face. And it's like you built an entire world. Of course, there's going to be weird nude horses, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, what you said me Saints Road Dex doing. Yeah, right. Oh, God, they need to I wish. just make a game that's just that. Not well, Agents yeah. of Mayhem. That was yeah. if I could yeah. if I could take that if I could take that nude horse and leave it in my stable and just ride the naked horse sometimes, yes. then I would totally do. Like I can yeah. ride a wolf that's like slightly more absurd than a hairless horse. The thing, Maybe. the grossest thing about the nude horse, because you texted me this photo, because of course you did, um, <laughs> was that it was jacked. Like it was brolic <laughs> as hell. Like it was, and I looked up online. I was like, I googled a hairless horse because why not? You know, like, mm-hmm. let's just <laughs> the algorithm forever. Uh, and like, there's pictures of hairless horses out there, and most of them just look kind of like scrawny because they haven't really had a great life. But this is a fake horse in a video game, and he's huge. He's built like a truck, but he's <laughs> completely naked. <laughs> he's got this little rat's tail. It's hard. It's really, it was really, really bad. Yeah, like a, new, a newborn guinea pig. But I wanted, I wanted to keep it. But I was on this mission following a woman to her hutch or whatever, and like. <laughs> Can't just creep behind with a naked horse. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be a little I suspicious. I, could, I wish I could ride all of the animals in that game. Like, I wish you could just do a thing where it just swaps the horse with like a chicken or a pig or a cat mm. or like anything. Yes, because That's like the giant, the giant wolf you ride around on is just like I think it's just an upscaled version of like a regular wolf that has like horse leg animation. We, we need to start like a petition dot or, or change dot order. Change dot. <laughs> spearhead this let's let's bring back stupid ass video game cheats it's it's a crime that this is not something that people do anymore games are are art i agree and they're serious business and yes that's that's good it's important and the, and you got the music you know you got everybody's it's a whole orchestra playing it's it's amazing it's beautiful bring back the idiot nonsense garbage i want to do dumb <laughs> stuff again it's let's just there, do a it, GoFundMe. we'll give yeah, you the money should, just do it perfect <laughs> yeah you know we, should do? we should take money away from studios <laughs> So their games aren't as polished and they should take that money and give it to charities. And then, yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be like called like a defund me and we'll make games more broken. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting into some dicey territory. <laughs> I want I want a nude would... mod for a game where everything in the entire universe is naked. Like the trees are just naked and the ground is naked and the buildings are naked and the horses Man, are naked. Smooth nether regions. I exactly. don't want to know what anybody's Ooh, yeah. got going on. Everyone's I just want Barbie ball. dolls everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> everything is made of nude flesh. Just awful. Oh. Just ter- terrible. Mm-hmm. I'm happy we just solved video games. I feel pretty <laughs> proud of the work no, we're doing. Sorry. On the show. Your move, yeah, studios. Yeah, take take that, Ubisoft. Take um, the next few months off. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't even know how to segue out of uh, nude it. horses. I, I, sh- I should preface very quickly: we are not asking for them to ship broken games. This is a <laughs> joke. <laughs> We just want cheats again. Yeah. Also, and I think also to clarify, we're not suggesting to take away money from no, the hardworking no. devs. No, take no, it away no, from no, the no, very no. Wit- rich executives at the top of those companies yeah, right, who had right, nothing right. to do with the games. Robin take, Hood. take the money from Bobby Kotick and use it to fund <laughs> glitches and cheats. <laughs> Let's use all that a money trash can money. as a gun in Call of Duty. Let me yeah. shoot people with a space heater or like a surge protector or whatever. Come on, the war. A naked car in GTA. A butt naked car. <laughs> um, I, that has to exist in GTA Online. I'm sure somebody's um, made like a skid motorcycle. In that yeah, that's, that's got yeah. it. Uh, but uh, speaking of video games, anyway, um, in the PlayStation Plus collection, apparently people have been selling their keys for the PlayStation Plus collection to PS4 users. So PS5 users who have all those games for free are basically just selling their like 
user info to people on eBay and things of that nature. Um, it, it's apparently happened. I, I when we reported on this, there was um, a, a, not like thousands and thousands of uh, reports of this happening, but enough so that people were catching on to this. And Sony has seemingly been banning the people who have been selling those. Um, and this just feels like a weird trend in the the recent like people being banned for doing stupid stuff happens quite often. This is a really interesting one, uh, but basically Sony has been known to ban people who log into a high number of user accounts in one day as a protection against fraud. Um, so this is, it's basically like a fail safe within Sony's system is kind of proactively preventing this from happening to a certain extent, but that could also cause you to lose your account. So maybe don't do that. Yeah. Um, but also don't, uh, as we were talking earlier in the episode, don't resell a console for three times the amount it would cost otherwise. And uh, on that note, there was a very funny story this morning of uh, a group of scalpers who were trying to buy up a bunch of Xbox Series X's, and uh, they basically lost out on the Xbox Series X's due to a technical error that the site didn't actually have the stock to sell. Oh, so tiniest violin, yeah. guys. Oh. <laughs> It's Sorry, just, you can pull off a big scam. <laughs> I just love that they were duped out of it by a technical error in their system. That Good. that is let, how it felt. Let the robots fight happy. each other. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it's it is just it's. A, I wanted to bring it up because we are obviously covering uh, scalping stories and issues of this kind. But just as a like PSA, like please, 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 if you haven't been able to get a PS5, if you're like hoping to get something for the holidays, like please take every precaution. These new these new boxes are very exciting. I don't disagree, and we are all very lucky to have been able to get our hands on them. It, it is not worth selling, you know, thousands of dollars worth of your stuff for to buy. Uh, there are still great games to play on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, don't and most of them are cross generation. Like you're exactly. not you're yeah. not missing out on like not playing those games. That said, I sold my entire Super Nintendo library to buy my N64, and I learned a thing called regret, and that's an important <laughs> life lesson. And I you did the same too. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It and was you, the worst. Right, and what do you do? You get old, and you get sad about it. You think about it, and then you you rebuy all those games again, mm -hmm. and they're more expensive and harder to track down. Now I'm rebuying Chrono Trigger for eighty five dollars. Right. Right. And you probably no got reason to do that. Dollar fifty from, you know, Funko Land or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Funko Land. Uh, so, yeah, learn from these old men. Don't sell your childhood. Away. <laughs> um, you stayed through the again. credits and now you get to see that Hawkeye's pregnant with the <gasps> Vision's daughter or whatever. I don't know. Why okay. didn't the developers just include the DLC with the original game? I'm We're going to answer those hard questions here. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, to jump into uh, <laughs> things we are happy to talk about, including video games we've been playing. Asa, what have you been playing? Uh, so I have been playing, uh, as we're really trashing on Ubisoft here, Ubisoft sent me <laughs> Immortals Phoenix Rising, and I've been playing a ton of that uh, to the point where sometimes I wish that I had those little helper cards. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've been playing a lot of that. My review will be out soon. Sorry to those who are wanting that, like, today it's i've got a few more things because i'm very much like i want to do every little side thing and while it's not as um it doesn't like pull me as much as breath of the wild which it clearly like very very heavily pulls from um i do love greek mythology and i've been all up into hades and so i have at least that much interest in it so i i am really digging in and trying to unlock as much as i can before i like really put my final like stamp of approval on it um, and then I just finally fired up Ghost of Tsushima because I decided I'm not going to wait nice. anymore. It's sitting there collecting dust because I've had too many games to play. Just start it. So those have really been the two games that I've been trying to like focus on. And then I, you know, I'll, I'll fire up like my Vita for no apparent reason and play whatever like Ollie 2 is sitting in front of me. Oh, man, yeah, I was just pretty <laughs> good last night. I just I, I love that damn system. Yeah, um, the. Uh, I've been playing a. Do you have one right within reach? I, I don't have that, but I I wanted to I show that this because I was a huge Vita for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. Oh yeah, I'm Vita a, Island. Oh I'm a yeah, remember there oh, it is. Vita Island. I do love that poster. It's, yeah, so, it's still it's out so there, good. by the way. There's there's it's 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 probably lost at sea right now, but it's still out there. <laughs> it's um, sunk with Atlantis. God, I I really wish PlayStation would make another portable system. I know they won't. There's so no reason, to do, but I really really wish they would. Um, I played I played probably about five or six hours of Immortal so far, and like I totally get it. I just don't love it, and I yeah. I think the reason that I'm kind of struggling with it 
is I feel like I don't really know exactly who it's for. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it feels um, a little sort of too lighthearted and jokey to be for adults. And it's a little too like sort of difficult and dense to be for like little, little children. I think it's, it takes a lot of like very smart lessons from breath of the wild and applies them. Um, There's a lot of stuff that's very similarly, almost one-to-one, like even the climbing mechanic, um, having to like eat things to uh like keep your you know in, endurance up as you as you climb a giant mountain and stuff like that it's extremely talky which i kind mm-hmm. of find surprising because i think that like one of the best things about breath of the wild is that it sort of leaves you to your own devices um the story is in that game is very much sort of you know uh in in the in the sides in the sidelines in the periphery and it, it doesn't there aren't really a ton of cutscenes in that game um that game is mostly about these sort of like intimate quiet moments that you have with exploration coming up over a big hill. And all of a sudden, you know, there's a, there's a huge enemy that pops up out of the ground. You have to fight him. Um, this game basically has these, like this uh, kind of Statler and Wardor from, you know, the Muppets who are just pretty much just talking over yeah. your entire adventure, which is like the same person. Yeah. They sound like the exact same guy. Um, exact same guy. Yeah, it's it's sort of that Ubisoft like there's like a very specific voice actor that like the type of a voice that they put as the sort of like anybody in a Ubisoft game that isn't the white guy is just like <laughs> it, it sounds like they're being like cousin Nico, you know, like <laughs> they're like um, hey, we need somebody Greek. Oh, that's him. Yeah, can yeah, you do all yeah. five of these people? Thank you. Yeah, can you be vaguely Greek for like seven of our games and a Viking? Um, yeah, so it's <laughs> it's. Like I get what they're going for because it is it is funny at times. It's just it feels weird to have this sort of like jokey, witty banter happening over almost everything you're doing. Like mm-hmm. every, coming out of almost every single mission or every th- single story, uh, they're there to remind you that they're in heaven, telling you about you know what they've experienced and stuff like that. And I totally understand like the context of it. I think that like um, like art direction wise, it's it's very pretty, but I, I feel like the the, the character models get a little DreamWorksy. Yeah, um, I dig the combat though. Like, I think the combat, the exploration, um, like it, it does that great open world thing where you can just go into an area that you're not ready for. It'll give you a heads up on it, um, but you can just start fighting some big ass dude that'll kick your butt. And like, that's that's what I look for in games, you know. Yeah, the combat felt very like Assassin's Creed. I mean, yeah. and that's probably what you would expect anyways. Um, like and talking about like the the duality of like the personality of the game, it, there's there's a moment where you go and you you free the first god or like the the first area that you're in, and your character is having such a touching moment in in the dialogue with that character, and then to have you know the the other two like commentators doing their joking commentary in between this like touching conversation, it's like what is happening? Right, and that right. like. That happens the entire game where it's like, I can't tell if this is a parody. I can't tell if it's a satire, if I'm supposed to take it seriously, if I'm supposed to be like moved because I'm constantly being like jerked in a million different directions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think you totally nailed it. I I, like, I love the idea of a, like a a breath of the wild for an even younger uh, generation, basically. And even younger crew. Like, I think there's something to that. Um, Max and I were talking about that recently about how like you don't really see a lot of open world games for kids. You know, I don't. I mean, you said this was like too obtuse for children, but I've seen like I've seen little kids play Breath of the Wild, which is kind of shocking. But I mean, again, yeah, this is this is. I think it's for tweens. I think it's for people who are like mm-hmm. you know eleven year olds who want to play something a little more challenging than your standard like you know Paw Patrol shovelware or whatever. <laughs> but you know they're obviously too young to play like a full M rated you know Assassin's Creed or Far Cry or whatever. The Percy um, Jackson crowd. Right. Sure. Version. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, no, I, I played a chunk of this for a like for a, a preview, you know, demo thing, um, which was on Stadia, weirdly enough. And I I was first of all, I was totally surprised that it has a character creator, which I feel like all the marketing has been so heavily being like, this is Phoenix. And I was like, yeah, that character doesn't really interest me. Uh, and then the fact that you can kind of make whoever and then also like right in the game, they were like, oh, here's like terrifying gorgon armor that is like does poison damage and makes you look metal as hell and i was like i i love the customization here like i was totally surprised by that because the i don't know again it is very like very colorful and very kind of dreamworksy um aesthetically uh the the sort of comedy was it didn't totally turn me off but i also again to brian's point like i kind of wish it would shut up and let me actually just see the game for itself 
Mm -hmm. Uh, It almost seemed like they were kind of trying to do like a bastion type of thing where like you're supposed to be wowed by the, Mm -hmm. by how much the game is talking about itself, which is interesting. Um, One thing it's, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's like that part is it's, 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 that's how entertainment was formed during like ancient eras like this. It was just storytelling. So I think they just carried that and applied it on top of like a modern uh, uh, entertainment product. And I don't think it like completely gels. It's a little too authentic. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) One thing that's interesting is, you know, like we often see sort of like games that like they start in, you know, this time period and then the next one goes here. They're already jumping into Chinese mythology with the second with the DLC, the DLC. Yeah, um, which is kind of wild. And also, weirdly enough, the third DLC is going to have top down gameplay, which is really odd. I don't know what that's going to look like. The, I, I haven't been able to jump into this one. I, I've been hearing all the criticisms and I think I'm still interested just as someone who like really does get sucked into the Ubisoft open world formula and likes Greek mythology and everything. But I, it, it's definitely good to know all this stuff going into it. I am very curious with them catapulting that far in the DLC and like what their plans are because Ubisoft, I don't think ever makes a game and doesn't intend to make it a franchise. So I do wonder what they see the future of this being because I think their last attempt at doing something more kid friendly was uh starlink which obviously didn't really go anywhere i think it had some neat ideas and i think i loved ad- it I, I think it it yeah. adapted the ubisoft open world model really well into a different like combat form and all that stuff mm-hmm. and i think it was just hampered by being a toys to life game um but i i feel like immortals is another attempt at that and i do agree with what you guys were saying like there's no reason big open world games shouldn't be targeted to all demographics. Like they're, they don't just need yeah. to be bloody Viking simulators. Like I love that this is also part of their repertoire and I hope that we see it go forward, but it, it, it is a curious first attempt. And with that DLC, I'm curious what they have for the future in store. Like we have like 30 years worth of video games where you kill something with an ax and it just disappears versus like having a visceral kill where you see like the knife going into the, it's like liver or whatever. And I don't know, maybe just have a thing where you hit it with the magic axe and it goes poof and it's gone. And you don't have to like put all draw all the realistic blood coming out of its throat or whatever. Like it's just kind of ridiculous how over the top some games have to be with it. And again, I sound like yeah. my mom here, but it's more like, I don't know, I want, you know, everyone to get into games. And it's it's just sort of odd that there's not, you know, I was that- surprised that they, they that their decision to make every every corpse stay throughout the entire and then slowly rot i thought that was like a really- <laughs> <laughs> for a second i'm like wait a minute what, like, where, what mod where did you gone? get and can i get it i got a bug <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> speak, speaking of going into the uh bloody realism territory i did want to touch on max you mentioned it earlier in the episode you're playing call of duty multiplayer what yeah what the are hell you, are you doing what? okay buddy what's going on i don't know honestly um <laughs> no so i was i don't know it, it, I don't know what's going on with me, but I think I just need like I just need like a a simple distraction. Like I'm just kind of just want to chill out. And I was like, so initially I jumped in because I was like, I I don't know, I wasn't feeling the single player. It felt like kind of too linear and just sort of you know they're like, we're let's go you know shoot people in Vietnam. And I was like, I've been to Vietnam. My family's from Vietnam. Like leave just you know get the hell out of here with that. And then I was like, you can go in uh, you know the, the multiplayer and like dudes with like you know, 420 screen names and like pink guns will shoot you in the head. And I was like, yeah, I'll give that a shot instead. Why not? And I, I like, I love the, uh, the haptic stuff. Like, I think it's just really like it adds, it adds something to it, you know, and it's, there's something like genuinely tactile there. That's super fun. And I've also been playing with, um, with big headphones on because, um, you know, filling my house with the sounds of gunfire isn't always such a hit with everyone else who lives here. Um, but yeah, like the the whole thing, I remember someone saying like a million years ago where it's like, oh, if you want to be better at shooters, like you got to like have good headphones because you can hear footsteps. And I'm like, for I think for the first time I've gotten sort of, you know, patient enough with it that I'm like, actually, it's like actually working for me. Um, and I still I, I still s- my old roommate. <laughs> What's that? I said, I wish they told that to my old roommate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely like, you know, it's it's a it's a loud it's a loud game. It's just really there's a lot of explosions constantly. And, you know, you molotov somebody and they're just like ah! <laughs> like um i did have a really like i still totally suck like i'm definitely not like i'm gonna be like mr esports or whatever but it's fun to be sort of like oh i'll give it a shot and then kind of like i'll stick with it and then be like oh i came in second weird okay um i had like this they have the whole thing where they track your stats and i was like i was, I was looking at it and it's basically like so low 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 and then there's this huge spike and then it's like low 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 and i was like 
what was what was I doing on what was going on on Thursday? Like I was on a streak and I was like, oh, it was on Thanksgiving. Like no one else was playing. It was like <laughs> I was just like, I guess I was just running around shooting people who were probably playing Call of Duty <laughs> because they didn't have Thanksgiving dinner or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've also. Um, let's see. I don't is the. Hold on, let me just check something. I want to see if it's under an embargo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I checked out uh, Kronos before the ashes. Seventy seven beat the game. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. The. Uh, have you guys checked out with Kronos Kronos before the ashes? I've heard of it, but I I haven't seen too much on it. Have Have you liked it? Yeah, I I ducked into it. I'll, yeah. So the reviews are up. Um. I played like the very, very beginning of it. And it's, it's, I kind of went in cold, like not knowing what to expect. It's a, it's an action RPG and it, it opens with like a very, like sort of very flowery cutscene where it does like a whole lot of just like really kind of uh, just like, I don't know, overt world building and just kind of really trying to set the tone. And then it's it kind of dumps you into the game and it's, um, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a souls like, I think um, I, I really just kind of scratched the surface and it's, it's, it's definitely a, got some prequel to Remnant. What? That's a prequel to Remnant. Is it a prequel? Oh, get the hell oh, out of here! Really? Which is great. That was like one of my okay. most played games last year. Isn't oh, that weird? I'll probably play it then. Yeah. Okay, so that makes that makes sense because I was uh, like, this is totally this is so much like Remnant of the. Yeah, but is, is it, it a different? It, uh, I don't. I think it's a different dev. I, it definitely seems like it. Okay, that I feel <laughs> stupid, and I obviously didn't do my homework before jumping into it. That's what happens when you're just like, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, no, the 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 settings I was like I was like I'm kind of over this whole like post-apocalyptic turned medieval, but I mean basically the whole thing with with Remnant was it was a, you know, a souls like with with guns. Mm-hmm. Um and in this case it's like it's just, you know, you're doing sword and board stuff, which is um interesting. But I I don't know. I again it was like the thing that I love so much about those um about the Souls games is that they just kind of they kind of just throw you in there and let you figure stuff out and this one was like all right, here, listen to this woman at a, at a campfire talking to you for, for five, five minutes. And I was like, mm, it's not the, uh, that's not the world building I want. Let me explore for myself. But uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I felt, um, I felt the same way about a couple of like souls, like games I, that I've played over the last few years that like, I, th- I think you like, you totally get it. Like fundamentally they, like they're supposed to be a little obtuse and a little scary and a little overwhelming. And I think when they get, uh, a little too handholdy in terms of explaining items or even with 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 narrative stuff um it kind of misses the point for me like i love that idea of just being like crash landing on a on a foreign planet and just w- walking out and being like so what's up and some beast pops out and murders me i'm like yeah all right let's do this but yeah i'll um, give it a shot it's i had no idea it was a prequel to that game i just looked at it I mean, you're you're forgiven because it sounds it sounds like you know a video game title made from just other words of different video. I mean, how like, 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 last year we got what was it? Outer Wilds and Outer Worlds. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. A friend of yeah. mine hit me up and was like, "Hey, um, should I check out our?" She's like, "Have you played Outer Worlds?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I had to Google it just to double check because I I totally like you know mixed those up so many times, which is well, just- and I think especially for that one, like we call that other game remnant. So for them not right. to use the word re- like ashes is there, but for them not to use mm-hmm. remnant again, it, it, it there was no connection until you had noticed that. Yeah, that's a very weird one. If they um, had called it like Kronos before the remnant, I would have been like, oh, I know that one of those words. And the other one sounds like that Super Nintendo game. <laughs> <laughs> you sold the fun uh, land. <laughs> and I just to $90. just to <laughs> briefly wrap it up, I've been playing. Uh, I finally was able to sync. I'm like 16 or 17 hours into Valhalla so far and really enjoying it. It's another big open Assassin's Creed. It looks beautiful next gen. Um, it's I am having that little bit of a weird disconnect where I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm the bad people because we are the vi- like I, you're just along the river. And it's like, oh, should I just go raid? maybe I'll just keep raiding these villages and murdering. And I feel a little kind of bad about that, but um, I'm obsessed with the dice game in there or log. That is, I guess I'm finally understanding why people loved Gwent. Cause this mm-hmm. is my Gwent right now. I, I love mm. or log. They're doing apparently a real life version. I can't wait to play that. Um, and then I'm also playing a ton of demon souls. Uh, I'm in upper Latria right now. Uh, and I, 
I hit that. I finally had that moment with it where I like was doing okay for a couple runs. And there was like one run where I beat three bosses in a night and felt just like a God. It was wonderful. Um, but, and then immediately got my ass kicked like the next night when I came back, but I'm, I'm finally in that mode of like the, the risk and reward of it is so fun and keeps pulling me along that I just, I keep thinking, Oh my God, I need to play Bloodborne. (laughs) Um, so definitely enjoying that. And we'll definitely try to make that happen soon. Uh, but before we also wrap up for real, I did want to just read one memory card story. Uh, because we've been getting a lot of great ones about the PS5 launch. Uh, and this week, for those who don't know, Memory Card is our weekly segment where we read your stories. You write into beyond at IGN.com. And if it's, you know, funny, weird, wacky, sad, whatever, we want to hear about your favorite gaming memories. This is, of course, as I mentioned, a recent one. This is from Thomas. And I'm going to pull it over so I can actually read it. Uh, and Thomas wrote in. Hey, all. Thanks so much for all you do on the show. The weekly listen is a highlight of the week. I've always enjoyed gaming, but it's really ramped up over the last few years. As a kid, my parents were more of the read a book crowd, but I was lucky to score a PlayStation for my eighth birthday and have had each sequential system since. I'm really lucky to say my first daughter was born on September 6th. Congratulations. About a week and a half later was the big announcement of pricing and launch date of the PS5. I was pretty pumped after the announcement and was thinking of pre-orders would launch that Friday. I fell asleep with the baby and woke up around 8 p.m., checked Twitter, and realized all heck was breaking loose and stores had already put pre-orders up. I quickly tried Target, Best Buy, Amazon, Walmart, etc., and no luck at all. Pretty bummed. That night, my daughter woke me up crying around 1.45 a.m., so I changed her and got a bottle ready. While I was up, I decided I didn't have anything to lose and tried again to pre-order. Sure enough, I was able to get a PS5 in my cart at Best Buy, and after hitting checkout probably 15 times, actually got through and got the system pre-ordered. I'm I'm now the proud owner of a PS5 and truly have my incredible daughter to thank for it. If she hadn't woken me up at that moment, there's no way I would have gotten one that night. I can't wait to share all the fun gaming memories with her in the coming years. And that daughter grew up to be Wario 64. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> deals were in the dna um but yeah i just loved the the 145 wake up in that story that's fantastic that is, uh, that's yeah. fantastic i love that I, I love that but yeah thank you thomas and thank you everyone else who's been writing in please continue to write in with uh your memory card stories we'll definitely read some before the year wraps up so if you have any especially holiday themed one we've had a lot of great uh, holiday theme stories if you have any of those please write in with them to beyond at ign.com please use the subject line memory card so i can pick them out uh, from all of the emails we get wondering if we want to buy horses or uh, cars or other things people <laughs> sign the email up for <laughs> Thank you for those as well. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap us up uh, for this week. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, before we leave, Asa, uh, again, anything you want to plug? Where can people find you? Where can they normally find your work? Anything yeah. recent you've been working on you want to plug? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me personally at a Green River 7 on Twitter. It's the best place. Um, let, let's just not do Instagram. I just need to throw that out there. I made a mistake. Wait, did you just say Twitter time. is the best place? That's, no, <laughs> the best place to find me. Okay, it is not. Yeah, I was to say, like, <laughs> unless you like to live in a hellscape, you know, I don't. Yeah. You might, you might enjoy it, but no, that's the best place Facebook to find me. Place. Oh yeah, Facebook. That's yeah. where I live my life. That's where it's at. Um, but no, if you could search borderline entertainment, uh, and follow that on all, you can do Facebook for that one uh, on all the social media platforms, uh, search on YouTube and Twitch. We have regular content. Um, game chat is the flagship podcast that we do. Um, it is, I was a really big fan of the old school variety TV shows where some no name host would just like have a, a television program for like three hours and it would just be like the best thing. So I decided let's do that with video games. <laughs> And um, I'm currently I've finished up the, the first half of the season um, working on booking people for um, uh, for 2021. So be on the lookout. That's going to be starting soon. But um, episodes that were live on Twitch are migrating over to YouTube. So you can go catch up on those if you missed them. But yeah. Awesome. And, yeah. and living indigenous, yeah. living indigenous. I sorry. I want to throw that in there again. Yeah, yeah, of course. The conversation we had yesterday. Um, and I would love to, to shout out the people that were on that because they're incredibly talented native and indigenous people. Uh, Shannon Baker uh, is a Twitch streamer. Miranda Dew is a, a game dev at Treyarch, a work on Cold War. Um, Noah Watts was the voice of uh, Connor Kenway in Assassin's Creed 3. He was there. Um, Baron J, my guy, he's a writer at Level 1 Gaming, did phenomenal. And uh, Lexi Graves is a community manager at a studio. All of them are incredibly talented people. And uh, you really should go check out and hear their stories. 
Awesome. Thank you uh, for mentioning that. And definitely I'll make sure we include a link to that in the description for this episode. So if you're watching it on IGN on YouTube, uh, there should be a link in the description. If you're listening via the audio podcast, head to the video version of the show and you can find a link to it there. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Ace. I really appreciate it. And yeah, Max and thank Brian, you so much. Uh, anything else you guys want to plug uh, before we wrap up? It is the beginning of a new month, which means another thrilling episode of the biggest games released in the month that it currently is. So we put up a thing this morning of December's biggest games or whatever, which is as many of them as we could find. And I try to read them all off and tell you about them and crack a bunch of dumb jokes in the process. And uh, I'm I'm very proud of it. Uh, Amanda Medina, who is uh, one of the people who keeps IGN running smoothly, basically was like, hey, can I produce this? And I was like, sure, I'm I'm very bad about doing that myself. And so <laughs> she's been a uh, huge help. And it's uh I don't know. It's a it's a fun show to make. So go check that out. Uh, and I'm about to shoot a unboxing video for the new Puma NAS sneakers, which I believe are sitting on my doorstep right now. So I'm very antsy to run downstairs and get those. Uh, <laughs> so check those out. It's a collaboration between Nintendo and Puma, and they are themed after the old school original NES colorways with a tiny NES controller on the side. So they cool. look really cool. So I'm super into it. So look out for That's that. That's awesome. Uh, and I just came back from uh, the week off. Thank you again, Max, for hosting the show. And thank you all for uh, keeping the show running during that week off. So Sorry I have nothing to mess. plug. Eh, it's fine. I got a bunch of gingerbread house photos. Can't ask for much more. <laughs> um, you know, it worked out. So uh, thank you guys for uh, keeping stuff running. I yeah, I don't have anything else. Just uh, I'm playing Demon Souls. So watch out for my Twitter because I've been streaming some of that. And that's been really fun because people have made me uh, do squats in the middle of boss battles and take off my glasses. Uh, so that has been a uh, fun, fun fact. I did better with my glasses off at a boss than with my glasses on. So I'm apparently very bad at video games because you're working those hammies. <laughs> exactly it's all in the legs uh but anyway thank you all so much for joining us for this episode really uh, appreciate you all being here thank you again to our special guest asa thank you for stopping by we'll definitely have to have you back on again soon and thank you to max and brian again for joining me uh, and thank you to red as always our producer who helps make the show happen and thank you all of you, you at home listening and watching uh we hope you're safe we hope you're well be good to one another please wear a mask please stay safe and as always beyond beyond beyond